Hi, today's video is about plinth beam. I keep getting questions from young engineers in my community and I pick some of the interesting questions to answer here in the YouTube video. The question from an engineer was that, is it really required to model plinth beam in the analysis model? Can we not support the plinth beam directly on the ground? Is there any other design criteria? I will explain all this in the video. Let's see what are the different points that we need to consider. And in case if you are not in my community, I suggest you, you join it. I have provided the links in the description. And also please ensure that you like the video and follow the channel for future updates. Let's get into some of the common questions. The first one is, can we support the plane beam on ground? Now this question arise because of the thinking that your plane beams are supported on the ground and the only load coming on the plane beam is the wall load on top of that. So if you look at this particular case, this may be your ground level and all your plane beam is continuously supported on the ground. So the question arises because of that. So only thing that is coming onto this in terms of gravity load, dead load, live load is the weight of the wall on this particular plane beam. There is no other load coming onto the plane beam with respect to dead load, live load or the gravity load we call it. So the question is, can we not continuously support this on the ground and ignore modeling this into the ETAPS model or any analysis software? The answer is that we have to mandatorily model this in ATAPS or any software that you're using. You cannot ignore modeling plane beam. The reason is related to the seismic loads. In India, we cannot design any building for only gravity loads. We have to consider seismic loads as well. Even for only gravity load, there is one consideration that you need to look into. Say that you are only designing for dead load and live load. This is not allowed because all structures in India is in seismic zones and hence you need to design for earthquake forces. But then say, in case you are considering dead load, live load, even then there could be chances that your soil over here is not well compacted and then there can be some loose spots. Sometimes you might do a mass excavation at the site and then after doing the foundations, you may be backfilling the ground. And if you don't get proper compaction, there are chances of the spleen beam getting settlement and deflections and bending. So that's something which you need to consider. But then say, if you have compacted it well, gravity load point of view, maybe that you may not have to consider modeling this, but then it will become a compromise if you don't model when you are looking at the entire load combination. So let me show you one particular model and then explain why my plane beam is very important to be modeled. It's part of the frame action. There are two reasons. One is that and one more is about the column effective length. So let me take the ETAPS model and then show you. So I have taken a 10 floor, a mid-rise building and then let me go to one of its elevations so that we can see the plane beam clearly. So here you can see this is your plane beam and if you look at the bending moment, so if you come to the bending moment diagram display, this is the dead load, live load multiplied by 1.5 combination which is not relevant right now because our intention is to see the earthquake behavior. So now this moment you can see dead load, live load is a little less because of the only load being the wall load on top of this particular plane beam. So if you are having a properly compacted soil and very good soil under the plane beam, maybe the load can directly go there. The beam might not bend, but that's not the case. When you have earthquake, your soil necessarily need not be firm there. And also if you look at the earthquake moment, it will be huge. So instead of taking the combination, just to give you clarity, I will take a case and then show you the earthquake X direct moment in the plane beam. You can see that it's extremely high. It itself is 113 or something close to that. You can see it is 113 and uh, on the other side also you have around 100. So when you have earthquake, this is how it is going to bend and if you have the combinations, it will be different as well. So I'm taking the factor envelope and you can see the bending moment for the envelope. So basically when you consider earthquake, so it'll be more clear in the independent load case, your plane beam is subjected to more bending and also when the soil is loose during the ground movement, it's not really ideal to ignore modeling this. Not just that the moments are higher, it's in fact 
a part of the frame so you have these beams so similarly you have a beam at the plinth level and it's resisting your total lateral deflections it's a part of the frame and hence it's mandatory that you model the splint beam it's not just about the value of the moment it's also about the splint beam existing there in real structure and then offering the frame action along with the other beams and columns so it's a part of the entire structure so it needs to be modeled the second reason is that your columns are going to be more slender if you are not modeling this particular plane beam so you can see here say if this uh, distance from foundation to plane is around 1.5 meters and if you have 3 meter floor height your column effective length will become much higher if you don't have this particular plane beam if there is a plane beam the unsupported length is less than otherwise so not modeling plane beam will also make your columns more slender which is not the right thing to do so summarizing the questions can we support the plane beam on ground not really but if it's only dead load live load maybe but then we don't have such a condition in india all the buildings are in seismic zone should we model the plane beam yes definitely you have to there are two reasons one is about the frame action which is actually existing there so you need to generate the actual site condition in your model so you have to model second thing is that your columns are going to be more slender if you don't model the plane beam so yes you have to model this is there any other consideration for the design of the plane beam your plane beam is like any other beam so all the design considerations that you need to take for a normal beam applies to a plane beam also many times you will also have to be mindful about the levels depending upon the site conditions constructibility based on the site conditions and so on so you might have project specific differences and considerations required as well so that's all in this video i hope you liked it please like the video and follow the channel in case if you like to be a part of my community please join my list the links i have given in the description once you join the list you will automatically get the link to join my various groups including whatsapp facebook and telegram thank you for your interest in this video see you soon bye bye have a great learning ahead